Microparasites, the invisible invaders. Let's start with the smallest, nastiest freeloaders on Earth, microparasites. These are your classic disease-causing culprits, viruses, bacteria, protozoa, and other microscopic gate crashers that invade living cells. Their strategy is simple, sneak in, multiply fast, and let chaos do the rest. Microparasites don't just live off you, they turn your cells into factories. A flu virus, for example, hijacks your DNA copier and forces it to print more viruses instead of proteins. Malaria parasites literally burst your red blood cells open like popcorn. And here's the terrifying part. Their small size makes them nearly unstoppable. They spread through the air, water, or even a handshake. One sneeze can send thousands of them on a world tour. They're also the ultimate survivors, mutating faster than your immune system can keep up. Antibiotics and vaccine? That's just a training montage to them. Some microparasites, like Toxoplasma gondii, even mess with the brain. It can make rats lose their fear of cats, or humans more impulsive. They may be tiny, but they've shaped history. The Black Death, smallpox, COVID, all courtesy of microparasites. They're proof that you don't need claws or teeth to dominate the planet. Just a cell and a bad attitude. Ectoparasites, the skin crawlers. If you've ever had lice, ticks, or fleas, congratulations, you've been a hotel for ectoparasites. These guys don't invade your insides. They just live on you, feeding from the outside like tiny vampires. Ectoparasites are masters of stealth. A tick can latch on for days, sucking blood and injecting anesthetics so you don't even notice. Fleas? They can jump 200 times their body length, making them the Olympic athletes of pesthood. Their bodies are designed like armored tanks, flat, tough, and near impossible to squish. And some of them, like bed bugs, can survive months without food, waiting patiently in your mattress for the buffet, you, to return. Ectoparasites have evolved alongside mammals for millions of years, which is both fascinating and horrifying. Ancient amber fossils show fleas the size of thumbnails feeding on dinosaurs. Imagine a Jurassic Park full of itchy T-Rexes. They might not kill you directly, but their real danger lies in disease transmission. Lyme disease, typhus, plague, all carried by these freeloaders. So next time you feel something crawling on your leg, remember, evolution has produced billions of creatures whose entire goal in life is to make your skin crawl. Literally, sexual parasites, the anglerfish nightmare, deep in the abyss, romance gets weird, and anglerfish are proof. In many species, the male's idea of love is biting the female until he fuses with her permanently. Male anglerfish are tiny compared to females, often one-tenth their size. When he finds her, he latches onto her belly or side, his body literally merging with hers until he's absorbed into her bloodstream. His organs dissolve, leaving behind only his testes. Congratulations! He's now a living sperm bank. It's not love. It's biological parasitism. The female gets a lifetime of fertilization on demand, while the male gets nutrients from her body. He stops existing as an individual and becomes part of hers. This bizarre system evolved because finding a mate in the deep sea is nearly impossible. So evolution said, why not just glue yourself to the first one you find? It's romantic in a horrifying sci-fi way. The female anglerfish swims through eternal darkness carrying several fused males like grotesque jewelry. Nature's motto, if tinder doesn't work, try fusion. Endoparasites, the internal freeloaders. If ectoparasites crawl on your skin, endoparasites take things one step further. They live inside you. These are your tapeworms, flukes, nematodes, and they make your digestive system their air B and B. The tapeworm, for instance, can grow up to 30 feet long inside the human intestine. It doesn't even bother digesting food, it just absorbs nutrients through its skin, leaving you malnourished while it lives its best life. Then there's the liver fluke, which migrates through bile ducts, or the roundworm which can live in lungs and even the brain. Basically, if you have a body part, there's an endoparasite somewhere that's thought, I could live there. 
They enter through contaminated food, water, or soil, often disguised as harmless eggs. Once inside, they're nearly indestructible. Some can live for decades, producing millions of eggs a day. And the worst part? You usually don't even know they're there, until you start losing weight or coughing up something that looks like pasta. Endoparasites aren't killers by choice. They need you alive. You're the Wi-Fi, the fridge, and the bed. They'll never thank you for it, but they'll never leave either. Adelphoparasites, the sibling thieves. It's one thing to steal from strangers. It's another to steal from your own family. That's what Adelphoparasites do. Parasites that target closely related species, often in the same genus. Think of them as evolutionary traitors. They look almost identical to their hosts, but have given up doing any real work. Instead, they hijack their relatives' hard-earned resources. For example, some red algae species parasitize other red algae. They tap into their host's tissue, absorbing nutrients directly from their cells. Essentially, it's the plant world's version of sibling rivalry if your brother drained your blood while you slept. This type of parasitism is sneaky because hosts often don't recognize the invader as foreign. Genetic similarity tricks their immune systems into letting the parasite move right in. It's the biological equivalent of identity theft, except instead of stealing your credit card, they steal your energy. Adelphoparasitism shows how blurred the lines in evolution can get. Sometimes, survival isn't about conquering others, it's about betraying your own. Kleptoparasites, the freeloading thieves. Klepto means to steal, and kleptoparasites are exactly that, creatures that let others do the hunting, then swoop in to steal the reward. The most famous examples are frigate birds, which harass smaller seabirds mid-flight until they drop their catch. The frigate bird then snatches the fish before it hits the water. Lazy? Maybe? Brilliant? Absolutely. Even spiders get in on this. Certain kleptoparasitic spiders live inside other spiders' webs, sneaking small insects off the menu. They're like stealthy dinner guests who never bring dessert. Hyenas are part-time kleptoparasites too, stealing kills from lions or wild dogs. It's risky but effective. Why chase when you can intimidate? Kleptoparasitism isn't just theft. It's a survival strategy that saves energy. Why burn calories hunting when someone else can do it for you? It's so successful that many species evolved purely to exploit others' hard work. In the game of life, some don't play fair, and evolution doesn't care. Winning is winning, even if you cheat. Brood parasites, the egg con artists, meet the brood parasites, birds that trick others into raising their babies. The classic culprit is the cuckoo. Instead of building a nest, the female cuckoo sneaks her egg into another bird's nest. The unsuspecting parents incubate it, feed it, and raise it, all while their own chicks starve. The cuckoo chick hatches early and immediately pushes the host's eggs out of the nest. Within hours, it's the only child left, a tiny feathered sociopath. Other species, like cowbirds, do the same. Some cuckoos even evolve eggs that mimic their host's colors and patterns, a biological forgery so perfect, it fools the victims every time. It's parasitism by deception, not through biology, but behavior. And the hosts? Some fight back. Certain birds have learned to recognize fake eggs and eject them, but cuckoos countered that too, by evolving threat displays. If the host refuses, the cuckoo might destroy the entire nest. It's less nature documentary and more mafia movie. Hyperparasites, the parasites parasite. Just when you thought parasites couldn't get more parasitic, meet hyperparasites. These are parasites that infect other parasites. That's right, even the freeloaders get freeloaded. For example, a wasp might lay its eggs inside a caterpillar. Then, another wasp species lays its eggs inside the first wasp's larvae. The result? A nesting doll of misery. It sounds absurd, but it's incredibly common. Fungal parasites infecting parasitic insects, viruses infecting parasitic bacteria, parasites are ecosystems in themselves. This endless chain of exploitation keeps populations in check. Without hyperparasites, the first parasites might overwhelm ecosystems. It's nature's way of saying, 
Even parasites have bills to pay. In the microbial world, it gets even crazier. Certain bacteriophages, viruses that infect bacteria, actually infect parasitic bacteria, which infect other organisms. It's parasitism all the way down. Hyperparasitism reminds us that in evolution, there's always a bigger fish, or in this case, a smaller one, waiting to eat your parasite from the inside out. Parasitoids, the horror movie specialists. If there's a creature that deserves a horror film, it's the parasitoid wasp. Unlike parasites, which usually keep their hosts alive, parasitoids kill them from the inside. Female wasps lay eggs inside or on another insect, often a caterpillar. When the larvae hatch, they start eating the host's insides organ by organ, saving the vital ones for last. That way, the host stays alive longer. Eventually, the larvae crawl out, spin cocoons, and leave behind a hollowed corpse. Some wasps even chemically mind control the host, making it defend their cocoons before dying. It's grotesque, but effective. Parasitoid wasps are major pest controllers in nature. Without them, ecosystems would collapse. There are thousands of parasitoid species, from flies to beetles. Even some fungi qualify, turning their hosts into zombies that climb to high ground before bursting into spores. They're the ultimate example of nature's efficiency. No waste, no mercy. And while it's horrifying to us, to evolution, it's just another Tuesday. Social parasites, the manipulators. In the world of ants and bees, social order is everything, which makes social parasites the ultimate infiltrators. These parasites don't live off your body. They live off your society. Certain ant species, like polyergus, invade other colonies, kill the queen, and enslave the workers. The invaders then make the host ants raise their brood, which eventually take over completely. Some bees do the same. Cuckoo bees sneak into hives and lay their eggs, letting the host bees feed and protect them. It's parasitism through deception and hierarchy. Instead of sucking blood, they exploit behavior, the trust and routines that keep colonies running. Even mammals do it. Cowbirds sometimes act as social parasites by manipulating the behavior of host parents or intimidating them into compliance. It's like corporate espionage, but with pheromones and mandibles. Social parasites prove that survival isn't always about strength. Sometimes it's about charisma, cunning, and a very convincing scent. Parasitic castrators, the reproductive thieves. Evolution's cruelest move might be the parasitic castrator, a parasite that shuts down your reproductive system so it can use your energy for itself. Barnacles that infest crabs are classic examples. The parasite invades the crab's body, hijacks its hormones, and sterilizes it. Then it manipulates the crab into caring for the parasite's eggs as if they were its own. Even the crab's behavior changes. It'll protect and fan the parasite's eggs, completely unaware that it's raising someone else's kids. Some flatworms and crustaceans do this too. It's parasitism by identity theft, stealing not just your food, but your entire biological purpose. It's efficient, in a dystopian way. Why reproduce when you can trick someone else into doing it for you? The result is a host that's alive, functioning, and utterly hijacked. Nature's puppets, raising their captor's legacy. Zombie parasites, the living dead masters. And finally, the most infamous zombie parasites. These are organisms that control their host's behavior like puppets on a string. Take Ophiocordyceps unilateralis, the zombie ant fungus. It infects an ant, takes over its brain, and forces it to climb to a high branch, perfect for spore release. Then it kills the ant and sprouts a mushroom out of its head. Or the Leucochloridium flatworm, which invades snail eyes, making them pulsate in bright colors so birds mistake them for worms and eat them. That's the parasite's next ride. Even Toxoplasma gondii, the cat parasite, changes rodent brains so they're attracted to cat urine. The parasite ensures it reaches the cat's gut, where it reproduces. Zombie parasites blur the line between life, death, and free will. They don't just feed off you, they wear you like a puppet. If parasites had a horror subgenre, 
These would be the directors. If you've watched to this point, slam that like button, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. This helps us to rank better in the YouTube algorithm.